So today we'll be talking about general solution. We'll be trying out three questions, one with sign, one with cost, one with tan, to try to explain how general solutions works. I hope you guys enjoy it. So we have this example. It says determine the general solution of two sine x equals to one. And normally whenever you get a question and you have to get your general solution, the first thing you have to do is try as much as possible to make sure your trig ratio doesn't have any value before it. What I mean is we try as much as possible to make sure that this two that we have over here is in there. We move it over to the right hand side and we simplify it. So I'm saying that this here would be is this sine x is equals to 1 over 2 or we can write it as sine x is equals to 0 comma 5. Now it doesn't matter if you're working with sine, cos, tan, you make sure that there should be no value at the back of them. Now you are allowed for values in front of them, that's not a problem and it should always be equals to something like this. So this is good, this is good, but this is bad. So let's go back to the question. The next step you're going to take in finding your general solution is to determine if your answer is positive or negative. Now this here says sine x is equal to 0, 0,5. So we can see our answer is positive. Now we need to determine where in our quadrant is sine positive. If you have your quadrant, we understand that sine is positive in the first quadrant and sine is positive in the second quadrant. So for that reason, we're going to get two answers to get our general solution. The first answer will just be x, while the second answer will be written as 180 minus x, because those are the equations of those two quadrants. Let's get to it. Now, the next step we now finally do is we get our reference angle. Now, how we get our reference angle is by moving the sine over to that side. So we write it like this. X is equals to shift sine 0, 5. Now, if you put this in your calculator, you should get 30 degrees. This is the first answer, which is... Now, whenever you're working with sine, you always end your answer by putting K360. This is the answer for sine being in the first quadrant. You could also write next to it, K is an element of integers. Now, for your second answer, we will also have X. You write the equation of your second quadrant. Then you try simplifying it. And don't forget to put K is an element of integers. Whenever you're working with general solutions or trig equations, you should always put k is an element of integers at the end of each step that you write. Our two answers are x is equals 30 plus 360 and x is equals to 150 plus k 360. Now the second type of general solution is the one that has sine and cos in which we transform into 10. You also need to put at the back of your mind the concept of co-ratios and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about right now. Now this question says determine the general solution of sine x minus 3 cos x is equals to 0. Now to simplify this the first thing you will do is move cos over to the other side. Now the next thing we're going to do over here is we notice that if we divide both sides by cos on the left hand side it will produce tan and on the right hand side the cos can be cancelled out which would help us find our general solution the reason why we can get tan here is because we notice that the value after our sign and after our cos are the same so as you can see they both have x and they both have x the first thing we'll do is determine which quadrants tan is positive because we see we have plus 3 over here. So as you know, tan is positive in the first and in the third quadrant. Then we move tan over so we can get our reference angle. And now that we have our reference angle, we would substitute them into the equations in which tan is positive. 
So the equations are x and 180 plus x. So those will be our two answers that we put it into. So our first answer is just going to be x is equals to plus the example we did previously, which involved sine, it ended with K360. However, for tan, we always end with K180, not K360. So we're still going to put K is an element of integers. This would be your first answer. While your second answer, as we said, this will fall in the third quadrant. It will be... And don't forget to put K is an element of integers. And this would be the two answers that you're going to get for 10. Now that we've tried our general solution, let us try out a question where we have to get a specific solution within a specific set of range. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about right now. Now we have this question over here, which tells us to solve for x. It says cos 2x is equal to negative sine x minus 60 and x is an element of negative 180 to 180. Now, for you to answer this, you need to understand the concepts of co-ratio. The concept of co-ratio tells you that that for you to change from sine to cos, we would always say 90 minus the value that you're working with. So that is very important in answering this particular question. Now, from the previous example we did, we said that if the values you have after cos or after sine are the same, we can divide both of them by cos. So in turn, it is transformed into tan. Unfortunately, that can't work in this case because we notice that the values that we get are different. The value after cos here is 2x and the value after sine here is x minus 60. So the only way we can actually simplify this is by changing either our left-hand side or our right-hand side by the opposite, right? So we can change the left-hand side to sine or we could change the right-hand side to cos. So in this case here, I'm going to change the right-hand side to cos. Let's clean that up first. We change this to cos by making it 90 minus the value that you're working with. So let's simplify this a little bit. So this here says cos 2x is equal to negative cos 150 minus x. Now this negative cos 150 minus x is the same thing as negative sine x minus 60. Because they have the same trig ratios, they could actually fall away. So what I mean by that is that we can actually have this as 2x is equal to negative 150 minus x. To get our answers, we will need two things. The first thing we will need is to determine the quadrant we'll be focusing on. Now, since this is negative, we understand that cos is negative in the second and it is negative in the third quadrant. Okay, so the equations of those two quadrants is 180 minus x and 180 plus x. Now, the second thing we'd also need to focus is what is our reference angle? And in this case here, it's a little bit different from the questions we'll be working with we'll take that as our reference angle, which is 150 minus x. So now simplifying this, this is what we're going to write down. Now cos, you always end it with k360. So simplifying this a bit. So as you can see, your final answer here will be 30 plus K360. Now remember what we said in the previous examples, try as much as possible to make sure you keep K is an element of integers for every single step that you write it down. Now the second answer that we'll get is in the third quadrant. So with this, we have half of our work done. Now, the second half of our work is actually solving for x. The question asks us to solve for x, not just to get a general solution. To solve for x, you first of all need to get your general solution. And after getting your general solution, you substitute values for k that will be within the range negative 180 to 180. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. 
So let us try substituting values for k. Our two answers were x is 30. Sorry, I made a mistake here. So our two answers is x is 30 plus k360 and x is 110 plus k120. Those are our two answers. So we are going to put in values for k. We're going to try negative 1, we're going to try 0, and we're going to try 1. So these are the three answers you're going to get for the first one. And only 30 is the only answer that falls within the range that we want. From negative 180 to 180. That's what we're looking for. That's the only one that falls. Now for this one over here, we're going to try out a little bit more. We're going to try out from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, maybe 2. So when we substituted negative 3 down to positive 2, I noticed that these answers, negative 130, negative 10, and 110, were the three values that actually fell within the range that we wanted. Our final answer would be, yeah, would be these four answers. We are choosing these four answers because substituting integers into our values for k that falls under the range that we are asked to get, which is negative 180 to 180. So this is exactly how you solve for questions where they ask you to solve for it. First step, get a general solution. Second step, substitute values for k. And that's it. And this is exactly how you solve general solution and also find specific solutions. Now we have other videos on Trig in the description below. Do check it out. And on your way out, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.